here is um, test data. I'm going to come up with a contrived uh, scenario for nested, but uh, this is something that um, can save you when it comes to kind of organizing your code in a large code base. Let's say you're testing the add method, right? You want to have uh, a bunch of tests to make sure that all those inputs result in the right outputs. So let's say you want to test for, you know, adding zero with a number is going to give you the same number. Zero doesn't affect anything. Adding a negative number will decrement the number. You know, there are a bunch of test cases that you need to run in order to verify that the add method works. How do you solve this problem? You can, you can of course, put all of them in the same method. You can have a bunch of uh, assert equals here, right? You can say assert equals two and uh, let me actually switch to the shorter convention now that you guys know what uh, expected and actual are. So this is expected, this is actual. Uh, so I can add a bunch of assert equals and say, okay, this value, this is the expected, this is the actual, this is the expected, this is the actual. But this results in your test method being pretty big, right? Your test method keeps growing in size and then you also lose the ability to provide different display names for it. Right? So let's say you want to have a display name which says uh, testing for negative numbers, testing for adding zero. You essentially have a problem of organizing. You want to somehow group those things together and say these all test a single thing, but then each of those tests are testing for different scenarios. How do you do this? Well, one way to do this is by using the at nested annotation. Right, That's the exercise we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating at nested in order to create a bunch of tests for the add method and group them together. Nesting is a way for you to group tests so that they become a part of one thing, right? So here's how that nested works. So the first thing you do with at nested is you can throw all these things into a class, right? So let's say I have, uh, let's say I have a test add positive. And adds positive numbers. And I'm gonna copy this and say test add negative, which tests negative numbers, right? Addition of negative numbers. Okay, you can technically do this, but then you essentially end up having this huge list that you'll have to pass through and it's not organized in any way. But guess what? I can actually create a nested class inside this math utils test class, right? So let's say I create this class. Class add test. So this is a class, a nested class, which is going to contain tests for add alone, right? And I'm gonna stick this thing, all these methods inside here. Okay, so this is a nested class and I'm using the same add test annotation and uh, display name, which you should know by now. Um, let me actually testing add method for positive, testing add method for negative. Okay. Now what I can do is I can say this is a nested test, right? And this I import from Jupyter API, no surprise there. So what I have here is a nested test inside the parent test. So when you put a class, nested class inside and then you use at nested, JNet is gonna run these tests, it's gonna do that, but not only that, it is going to group them together to be a part of one thing. So you can have a bunch of test cases here which all test at test, all right? So let's run this and I'll show you how that looks like. Run. You see here, add test is its own root node here. And then you can expand this. And here you see, it's organized the children below it. So you can essentially group these tests together like this and uh, have them um, in a way, make it easy to organize, right? So it's the first thing. And the second thing is, it affects the failure state for these tests, right? So let's say if any of these were to fail, my add method test has failed. My add method is not working like it should, right? And I'm gonna give you a wrong uh, value here just to make the test fail, and then I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I do a minus three so that the test add negative fails. 
And now if I were to run this, you notice here, this thing has failed, but then add test itself has failed as a result. So the add test is essentially the success or failure of add test is kind of a cumulative of all the children, right? You don't get that benefit when you have each of them as individual tests. You'll say, okay, add test, there were five tests, one of them failed, but you see a bunch of greens there. You don't know what the end result of that add test is. So now here, since you have that hierarchy, this add test node is going to pass only if all of its children pass. If any of them fail, there is a clear indication that, well, the add method isn't working, right? So you kind of roll up the status of failure. So that's very handy. That's one reason why uh, it's handy to kind of um, group these things together like this. Um, okay, now I'm gonna put this back here to minus two. And then in addition to grouping, there is also a way in which you can leverage this group and display name to come up with uh, readable test messages. This is a very fascinating concept and you will end up seeing this uh, in a lot of real world uh, production applications. And this is what they're trying to do, right? Let me show you. You can, first of all, you can stick display name on top of a class, right? You know this, you can take this display name and put this on top of a class. So this thing changes. Whatever you're seeing here, math utils, it's gonna change to uh, something more readable. So I'm gonna use display name in combination with uh, display name for the test method in combination with nested to provide readable English sentences which describe what the test is gonna look like, all right? Here's how that works. First, I'm gonna put a display name here, the very top. Matthew tells add method to positive when adding two positive numbers returns the right sum. There is a bit of an art to this to kind of figure out what makes sense. Uh, again, there are probably conventions that are followed in organizations where you will end up using this. So it helps to kind of follow those conventions. All right, look at how this looks like. When running math utils, the add method, when adding two positive numbers, uh, it returns, okay, should be should. Okay, that's that's what I was gonna think. Should return the right time. Okay, and now if I were to change this to a one, the idea is to um, form a sentence, right? I'm probably doing a bad job of it, but you get the idea. It says when running math utils, the add method, when adding two positive numbers, should return the right sum, right? So this is where I'm kind of taking the sentence to the assertion statement. There are some uh, practices where the assertion statement, well, the, the sentence ends over here so that you can see a full sentence uh, when the test is successful as well and not just when um, the test fails. So there are ways in which you can craft this message so that you get a complete sentence. Uh, how you form that sentence is up to you, but I'm just telling you that this is how you can typically do this and create this kind of nested structure which reports how the test has worked.